That's Bucky's Denton. Is that? No, that's that's just that's in, in Denton. A Bucky is a big chain. Well, they got like six stores. And what do one, they sell? One here, one in Fort Worth, two going to, towards Houston, one going towards Austin, one in Waco or Temple. This is their second largest one. We've got a hundred. They got oh, hundred, hundred and twelve gas pumps. <laughs> uh, this is crazy. I'm sorry, 112? 112 well, gas pumps. This is a big road. This is one of the biggest the I-35. roads. I-35. And, and 18 wheelers are not welcome. For Bucky. Bucky's 18 wheelers are not welcome. And they, one of a few convenience stores where you need a shopping cart to go inside. Well, they do make the gas here, so. It, 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 it's Bucky's. It's, it's, if we get a chance, somebody to take you in there, you'll see why. All right, well, oh, damn. Am I dressed too cold or too warm? I don't even know. I got this, perfectly fine. I got this winter coat. I got Ronnie back here, <laughs> and he he's my my. I, I can't say chauffeur, driver, chauffeur, friend. Driver, we we talking politics and climate, race relations. race relations, climate change. We're gonna go eat this Mexican. I was so excited. They got an El Pollo Loco, which is like an LA thing, and then across the street, they got an In and Out. All the way back there, so it's like I'm. All, I feel like I'm in California already. We're gonna, <laughs> but I got. We're gonna get some chicken with some avocados on it, and then uh, six o'clock I'm go check out the film, the Denton Black Film Festival. You make sure you're, and if you're in Dallas or Denton, Texas, please come support. Saturday, tomorrow, 1:30 p.m. I'm doing a panel, Black Film Now, and. Um, Sunday with Kurt Whalen is here. Oh, Kirk Whalen. Well, I'm I'm opening for Kirk Whalen. Is that what you're saying? Oh, Kirk Whalen's here on Sunday. <laughs> on Sunday, DentonBlackFilmFestival.com. Check us out. All right. Let's, let's. So we're eating, and then tomorrow, got our sights on. In and out because we're staying <laughs> over there. Hotels over there. Family. Family, we, we out here in Texas, there's a lot of space, a lot of land. Cows used to live here. Now we got Speedway Racetrack. And you won't believe how much this gas is. Yo, check that out. $1.99. Make you want to live here almost. $1.99. But you got to drive further. That's, that's, the, that's the trick. They make the gas cheap, but you got to drive every freaking place so shout yeah. out we're in Texas oh, wish you were here. in Denton saying in 2013 there have been more film in terms of representation more black films had been made in the previous 10 years 20, 2003 to 2013 than had been made in the entire history of film before that um, because of the technology but no one was stopping to chronicle it or talk to the people and you know I started talking to people wow wouldn't it have been great if we if somebody had the foresight to talk to an Oscar Michaud while he was making the films or Spencer Williams and now the technology affords us all those opportunities to, to capture those stories and I just happened to be a little bit ahead of the curve because I had a YouTube channel a public access show based in Philly called Real Black TV and also the screening series we would invite filmmakers and I also was making films I traveled to festival and you know so I knew a lot of people so what what we're about to see is about 25 minutes long and it's it's sort of a culmination compilation of some of the, the, the best quotes, I would say, uh, of, from black filmmakers, specifically directors, writers, um, in terms of uh, the questions that are being raised now that have, may, may have always existed in terms of uh, black film. If you want to say black film or, you know, we'll, we'll, after the film, we'll get into a working definition just so we can have the con further conversation more. Um, but again, I'm here for you. This is just an introduction to throw ideas into the room and then um, we can go back and forth and, and have a conversation. I can't watch this film without tearing up because I, I feel the weight of not only the four that are featured in this film, but also the many stories that didn't make the film that I witnessed just being there. 
and the weight and the gravity of having your life stripped from you, and especially with most of the offenders that are in that jail are nonviolent offenders. Most of them are addicted. Our, our drug laws are absolutely insane here in this country and need to be changed deeply. These men don't really need to be in jail at all, uh, many of them. Um, many of them instead need to be in treatment. And there is a huge disparity between how white offenders are treated when it comes to addiction and the view of what needs to be done to effectively change their lives and get them back on the right track as opposed to black offenders. Back to Chris Rock. So he's just like, you know, we, we, we exist too much in reality. Like, you know, you go see black movies, you go see a movie called Car Wash, it's set in a car wash. You go see Barbershop, it's at a barbershop, right? So he said, well, what's the next movie? Uh, check Cash in Place? You know, we have to expand. <laughs> we, that's his joke. We have to expand the, 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 the idea of what movies stand for and what was great about, all right, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take credit for Chris. Where, where is that? <laughs> hey, well, all right, so it's tit for tat. I actually wrote a joke for Chris Rock. I never get credit for it, so um, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take that laugh. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so we, we have to expand our own possibilities in terms of stuff. And I think what was great about Get Out and, well, Get Out was interesting because it forced white audiences to deal with what it's like to be in our skin for two hours at least, right? You, like, there's no way, like, you, in order to appreciate the film, you had to empathize and root for a black man for two hours, right? So I thought that was the subversive thing for me. I don't know if anybody else got that, but, and then for Black Panther, I walked out, like, I didn't think it was that great, quite frankly. I, said, I thought it was just, like, it was, I like, there are Marvel movies I like way better, like Doctor Strange, and spider, you know, that movie tripped me out. I was like, wow, you know, but for two hours, we got, what, we got the experience of what white folks get all the time with Tom Cruise and Keanu. Like, we literally got to be superheroes. And I understand the energy and the pride and all that. And, you know, I just want some more money to come back. I don't want, I don't want to be like 30 years from now interviewing somebody that was up in Black Panther and just like what happened you know it's like you know you didn't save your money like yeah, i don't want i don't want you know like behind the music the <laughs> cast of you know like you know sad enough what happened to hammer and i love hammer i love mike tyson those were our heroes 30 years ago and now we're rooting for these folks and it's like i just save your money something because it's not nothing's promised unless you own it yourself and then they can still eminent domain you um, but just like you said, everybody, we try to, in this film, we try to make everybody the issue as well as the victim. Um, everybody, everybody's hands is involved in human trafficking. And just like you said, go back to your question, it definitely is uh, social. You know, the music videos, the music we listen to. Like when I was younger, I used to listen to crazy music. Now I have a, a child or two children, and I would never let them listen to that type of music. And, you know, you're, you're talking about institutional racism, and I'm not the smartest person in the room, but um, Yeah, I just want to let you know that M. Legend has really done a lot for us, and he's really one of the more prolific filmmakers that uh, you'll meet. Uh, he. Um, it's helped so many filmmakers that I know about and they've told me, and some of them he doesn't know, that they've shared the fact that he's helped them with distribution. He's talked to them about how he can extend his network and he's made a lot of introductions. So we really do uh, appreciate uh, everything that Mike has done for us. So uh, we're gonna close out. And um, part of it is, uh, it's, it's kind of sad, right? But we still have uh, four more films, and we have uh, uh, Kirk Whalum tonight. How many of you going to Kirk Whalum tonight? Oh, not enough, not enough. Hopefully you, you'll go. Uh, we hopefully will have you know, 600 to 700 attendees for that event.
So I, I take instruction well. All right, okay. So introduce yourself, what brings you to Denton, and what are your impressions? Uh, I'm James Curry. I brought the documentary Master Jam here. And boy, I couldn't ask for a, a more welcoming environment and platform to showcase black film and just um, film in general. Uh, it was really, really warm environment. I can't thank uh, Harry and Linda Eady enough. Tell us about Master Jam. Master Jam's an investigation into my uh, brother's suicide and the fallout that occurred uh, because of it. And um, it's an hour long sort of um, testament to that. And it's, it exposes some of the antidepressant um, side effects that most of the public might not be aware of. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for your loss. That's all right. <laughs> I'm glad, but film is a catharsis. You, you bet it for is. Those, for those who want to, well, I, well, did you learn much as you're making the film? Had you made? Oh, of course, yeah. What, like, I had you made films before, like, this is my first time really. Oh, yeah, no, um, I mean, I, I did a narrative short um, that was in the 2016 Minneapolis-St. Paul International Film Festival, okay. New York Short Film Festival, okay. and, uh, you know, Master Jam was my first documentary. But you live in Dallas? and then... No, I live in Minneapolis. Oh, you're, okay. Massive. I did some documentary work for Prince, uh, Life of the Party, a, uh, an unreleased documentary that shows at Paisley Park. Um, and then, um, but Master Jam was my first foray into documentary. Well, how cool is that? Well, Personal. congratulations. Well, well thank for, the, you. for those who weren't here tonight, but where, where can they see Master Jam? Yeah, I'm shooting for an ITVS uh, grant to maybe get PBS or POV to show it. Um, otherwise, it might become an educational piece uh, once I re-edit it for safe messaging in schools. Um, possibly Canopy. Okay. Um, canopy so see, with a seeking K. distribution. Seeking distribution. But uh, you, your own, are you on social media handles like that? Yeah, uh, hashtag Master Jam Doc. Uh, and on Instagram, um, at Master Jam Doc too. And Facebook, Master Jam Doc. Basically, Master Jam Doc. Everything. I'll just keep you standing there. Okay. Uh -huh. What's going on down here? Train wheels. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Wait, you didn't have your name on. Wait, introduce yourself. Tell us what Train Wheels is. Uh, train Wheels was a, a story that I wrote about my relationship with my dad. I'm, I've always wanted to know what was on his mind, so I decided to make a story about a little girl with supernatural powers. <laughs> and you, you, you automatically have supernatural powers because you're one of those directors that have they're known by one name only. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> so you, Anna Cole. I try to be. Yeah. Um, Introduce yourself. Um, my name is Santa Cole. I'm from Chicago. I just want to say that the Denton Black Festival, uh, Black Film Festival, has been amazing. The staff has been amazing. It's warm in Texas. It's negative two degrees back home in Chicago. So I just like to thank everybody for having me. Thank you for embracing Training Wheels, and I hope to be back. Love it. Okay, I'll come back. <laughs> hey, so introduce yourselves and and congratulations. What do we have there? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the runner-up uh, award for our film Alora. That was screened here at Denton Black Film Festival. It was the world premiere. Yep. Okay. I'm Nick Mothersbaum, the writer, uh, co-writer, co-producer, and director. And I'm Michael Gibson Jr., uh, co-writer and co-producer. So Nick board. and Mike. So, but uh, you're and you're based here in Dallas, or I'm in Dallas. He's in Fort Worth. I'm in Fort Worth. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so this is super exciting. How did yep. you guys hook up? collaborate on this project? What is the project about? I'll let you take care of that. Oh, no. Um, so this was actually conceived for uh, another film competition called Cinespace. It's uh, the Houston Film Society and NASA come together in Houston to uh, do a, a film competition. And so it was originally conceived for that, but we were lucky enough to get it here at the Denton Black Film Festival. Yeah. So it's exciting to be here. Is that picture? This is video, oh, but video? you can show off your prizes and then tell me who you are. Okay. Hi, um, well, we can start here. Uh, all right, you have exactly two minutes to explain everything. 
Uh, hi, I'm Sierra Boniface um, at Denton Black Film Festival. I just won Best Texas College Short and Best College Short. And um, it's just a really great feeling to be able to get an award for this short film because um, it's going to be turned into a feature later this year. So I'm really hyped about that and I'm hyped to get that film out. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, we were talking yesterday. So you're, you're, you're on, let's say, on the verge, you're bubbling under, you're... you're you're the hot filmmaker. You won two awards. I don't think anybody else at Denton has got two of those things for the, for the exact same piece of work. And then that's not the only prize that you got for oh yeah this in the past twelve months. <laughs> yeah, um, last February I won a contest with Disney and Nissan um, for the next visionary filmmaker, and um, that was a very surreal experience to be able to go to the Wrinkle in Time premiere and to meet Ava and Oprah and so many great people. Um, that I still stay in contact with today, so it's really great, and um, yeah, I'm just really happy to be able to continue to pursue filmmaking and pursue my dreams. Okay, so how did you get interested in film, and why is it important for you to tell these stories? I got interested in film actually through skateboarding. I would just film myself skating and put it up on YouTube, and then I just tried to uh, get into actually telling stories and something about that was really powerful to me so I tried to brainstorm and do scripts and I ended up following that passion for a while um, so I made films in high school and then I continued in college and now in my senior year I'm able to tell stories that I really want to tell and it's just a really great feeling and I think it's important that our stories are told by people that look like us and I'm glad that I'm able to do that. Okay. And, and you choose to do it in Texas or are you out of here as soon as you get that diploma? Um, I'm going to stay in Texas for a while because skin tight is kind of important that it's set in the south and I think it's important that it's set in Texas. So I'm going to definitely try and do that feature here. Um, but definitely I see myself going out eventually out of Texas, um, maybe LA or Atlanta one day. Five year plan? Uh, five year plan is I'm hoping to have some features under my belt and I'm hoping to be able to not only get these stories out but also inspire other people to also pursue filmmaking and pursue genre different genres because I think there's a lot there's a lack of filmmakers in certain genres and I feel like we need to kind of tackle those as well. well best of luck to you and yours and congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, yeah, sure.